Hi everyone and welcome to Book Boop. My name is Rachel and today I'm going to be doing the finally fall book tag. Today is September 23rd, 2019, which means it is officially the first day of fall, so it's the perfect time to do the finally fall book tag. This is also a great book tag to do, honestly, every year because the answers can change quite a bit each year to year, so it's going to be really fun to do, but this is my first time doing it and I'm super pumped. I've got my trusty list here of all the questions. There are 10 questions total. So let's go ahead and jump into the finally fall book tag. In fall, the air is crisp and clear. Name a book with a vivid setting. So this book I don't actually own, but to me it is the perfect book for a vivid setting. And that, that is The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. Oh my goodness. I just read this book this year a few months ago and I absolutely adored it. The Night Circus follows these two people who are are battling it out within a circus that's at night. They are two magicians and they're not battling face to face. They're battling as in creating all these different attractions and trying to one up each other on these attractions. But it's a very, very atmospheric read. The best way I can describe the feeling it gives is if you have, if you live in a town that has like a certain festival, especially if it's like a fall festival that's every year and you go and there's all those sights and sounds and smells of the festival. You've got the frying nuts and different fried foods basically and just there's the ferris wheel in the distance you hear kind of the screams of people on those kind of collapsible rides and it's just that feeling and you've got that fall feeling in the air and there's you hear the rustle of the leaves blowing across the pavement as you walk around in this fair that's the feeling it gives honestly and i did not want the book to end because i absolutely love it the story is amazing as well but it is so atmospheric. So to me, that is the perfect kind of atmospheric read that gives a nice vivid setting for the fall. The next question is, nature is beautiful, but also dying. Name a book that is beautifully written, but deals with a heavy topic like loss or grief. So I don't read a whole lot of heavy topic books, but the one that popped in my head that I think surprisingly dealt with some heavy stuff was my Diary from the Edge of the World by Jody Lynn Anderson. This is actually a middle grade book and it's written in diary form. And it takes place in a world that's very similar to ours, except there's some magical aspects to it, like there are dragons in this world. But one of the things that's focused on this world is that whenever someone is going to die, a dark cloud comes and will kind of like float over that person's house. And it's kind of an omen saying someone in that house is gonna die soon and it'll kind of follow that person. One day, this family, a cloud comes over their home and they're pretty sure that it's the youngest little brother because he's always sick and they're afraid that this little boy's going to die so they actually try to outrun the cloud and try to find somewhere where the cloud can't get to them because the cloud actually will take the person away when they die. So <laughs> this story deals with a heavy topic. There's a lot of joy and whimsy in it as well. It is middle grade but actually deals with a lot of heavy topics and the ending of this book made me cry. I'm not ashamed. I cried and I don't cry in books that often. So this one is a fantastic one to fit that prompt. The next question is, fall is back to school season. Share a nonfiction book that taught you something new. So this is another book I don't own. I actually listened to the audiobook, borrowed it from my library, and that is Crazy Busy by Kevin D. Young. It's a very short book, and this book focuses on how we are just so crazy busy in our world. It is a Christian-focused book, so it kind of talks about um, our faith, and then also in response to the fact that we're always crazy busy. We're always trying to fit more in our schedules and feel overwhelmed and harried. And honestly, what I learned from this this book is a lot of times I'm personally a Christian as well and a lot of times I feel like I'm not doing enough and you know maybe I should be selling everything I have and moving to some third world country to do mission work or something and I feel guilty when I'm just not doing I feel like I'm not doing enough and that book reminded me of the fact that I am supposed to stay true to the call that God personally has given me and not looking at other people and saying, oh, well, I'm not like this person. I'm not doing what this person's doing, so I'm not doing enough. So just focusing on what I feel what God is calling me to do. So anyways, Crazy Busy, it's a great book. And again, it's very short. In the description of the book, it says it's a mercifully short book about a big problem. So the book's really short. It's only like a three hour audiobook or something. It goes by really quick. So very worth the read. Even if you're not a Christian, it is a great worth a read because there's a lot of great tools in there just talking about kind of 
shoring up your schedule and thinking through how we have a tendency to overfill our schedules because we do that's the way we live nowadays all right so the next one i keep picking up the wrong sheet of paper is number four in order to keep warm it's good to spend time with the people we love name a fictional family household friend group that you like to be a part of so a lot of times when people answer this question usually people say the weasleys from harry potter which i agree but that's when almost everybody uses it so it's like what's another one i could think of and the one I thought of is the family, the Blake family in City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. I absolutely love this family. So this story follows this girl named Cass, and she's had a near-death experience about a year ago from the timeline in this book. And she almost died, and because of that now, she kind of has one foot in death and one foot in life. So now she's actually able to see ghosts, and her best friend is actually a ghost. So in this story... She has a best friend who's a ghost, who's like a brother to her. And then her parents also, they are, they recently have been given a TV show. They write books about urban legends and ghost stories. And then they started filming a TV show where they're traveling the world and basically doing a ghost hunting TV show <laughs> pretty much. Uh, so, and her, her family is very learned and smart, but then they also like ghost hunting. And I don't know, it's just a really, really sweet family dynamic. They all love each other so much and they're just seem like a really fun family and having like a ghost best friend sounds kind of cool. <laughs> so I, I thought about this family. I think the Blake family in this book would be really, really fun to kind of hang out with or be a part of their family. All right, so the next one, it fits for fall, right? Nice and ghosty. Is the colorful leaves are piling up on the ground. Show us a pile of fall colored spines. So I've got a stack of books here. I did my best. I didn't have a lot of really good like fall colored books, but I will show you. So here's Here's my fall colored stack, got a little red, little green, little yellow and burnt orange in there. So that's the best I could do. There you go. So that's my fall stack of spines right there. All right, so the next one, my goodness, I keep picking up the wrong one. Fall is the perfect time for some storytelling by the fireside. Share a book wherein somebody is telling a story. So the one that I thought of, I've thought of a few different books, but one that I thought would be a perfect representation for this is Midnight at the Electric by Jodi Lance Anderson. So the majority of this book is written in diary form, and the story follows this girl who is living in the far future. The world is starting to struggle being able to basically being able to farm there anymore kind of it's just kind of disintegrating and so they're working on trying to figure out a way on getting other planets has like habitable so that we can start moving to other planets and this girl has successfully gotten to this program to be able to sent to be sent to a planet to try to get it ready for people to be able to live on and she's all about this program because she's not going to be coming back to earth and she thinks she doesn't have any relatives left she doesn't have any family left and then she finds out that she actually does she's got this really distant relative and she goes and visits this distant relative and while she's staying there she also finds some diaries of different like people in her family's past and so you actually go through two different people's diaries from her past family. So it's kind of like them telling the story to you because you're reading a diary. So that's kind of the best thing I could think of. It's just kind of the importance of family and our family history. And I think it's a great book. This book too made me tear up. <laughs> I just, I loved it. I love Jody Lynn Anderson's work. I just realized I have two books in this list of the fall book, book tag. So anyways, this one's kind of the best fit for that. And it's, it's just a great atmospheric kind of read too. And I love it. So, all right, the next time, next question, sorry. The nights are getting darker. Share a dark and creepy read. So this is one that I read very recently. So I th that would be a really good one to suggest. And that is Lair of Dreams by Libba Bray. This is the second book in the Diviner series. The Diviner series will be four books. The fourth book is coming out in the beginning of 2020, I believe. But this one was probably my favorite out of the series so far. I thought it was kind of the creepiest one, and I thought it was the best overall story in this one. Um, each book is an overarching story, but each one has its own kind of thing that it deals with. And in this one, it deals with sort of these creatures that are created from people who have died from their dreams. I don't know. It's hard to explain, but it's really creepy and it's a great creepy atmospheric read and I just love it. So I highly recommend this. Of course, the second in the series, you do have to read the diviners first. Sorry about that, but this one's really good. I really like this one and I feel like this is the perfect just creepy read. It's terrifying. <laughs> All right, next one. 
The Days Are Getting Colder, name a short heartwarming read that could warm up somebody's cold and rainy day. So again, I had a few different books to think of and the one I settled on is one I don't own. I really want to own it though because I loved it and I read it earlier this year. Let me look at the paper. I wrote it down. It's The Assassination of Brangwen Spurge by M.T. Anderson and Eugene Yelchin. So this is a middle grade book and I wish I could hold it up for you because it is the coolest looking book. So the style of the book is very sort of old English Victorian feel. No, that's not right, not Victorian. It's kind of got this old art style to it. It's really, really cool looking. And the story is very quick to read. It's a pretty thick book. But there's a lot of illustrations and it's a very quick read and it's a very heartwarming. So the story follows these two different peoples, the elven people and the, not golems, what am I thinking of? Um, let's just say golem, that's not right, but dwarves. No, not dwarves. What are they? Oh my goodness, my brain. So let's just say dwarves. So we've got the elves versus the dwarves and they've just been battling it out for centuries. The two people just don't like each other very much. And one day the elven king sends over this elven emissary, a gift to give to the dwarf king. And so they send in there and there's a um, guy over in the dwarf side who is housing this elf and the dwarf wants to be friends with the elf so bad he wants them to share information about their cultures and for them to learn about each other and it's just a great message about appreciating other people's cultures just because they're different from us doesn't mean that that's not a good thing just you appreciate everyone's different cultures and upbringing and things like that it's a beautiful message or beautiful illustrations I love it. It's such a good quick read and it's so heartwarming and I love it so much. So please check that one out. It is just such a sweet story. It's so good. So that's a great one I would say. That's a quick read that would kind of give you a warm heart during a cold rainy day. Next one is Fall Returns Every Year. Name an old favorite that you would like to return to soon. So I forgot to pull it down but one I would love to return to soon is the Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling. I would love to reread it. I haven't reread it in a long time and I'm remembering a whole lot more about the Harry Potter movies than I am the books, which is not a good thing. I need to remember more details of the books. That's when you know it's time. So I'm hoping to reread Harry Potter soon, but that's one I would really love to reread and it's the perfect time to read it. It's just a nice fall kind of wintry read. I don't know. It's just the perfect time to read it to me. So. That's one I would love to delve into again. The last prompt is fall is the perfect time for cozy reading nights. Share your favorite cozy reading accessories. So my favorite accessories when I think of like cozy reading, one is a sweatshirt. Having a nice, warm, cozy sweatshirt on, which by the way, I'm dying right now with the sweatshirt on and the scarf. It is so hot in this room and it's, it's like 100 degrees outside. I'm not joking, it's hot right now. So I don't, I'm dying right now. I'm sorry if you can see me sweating. So sweatshirt, first of all, then I also like to have a nice hot drink. And this is my favorite mug. This is my Marauder's Map mug and I love it. It's giant because I love to make giant glasses of tea. Hot tea is just my jam. So this is my favorite mug. This is one I go to whenever I have a nice big mug of hot tea. And one of my favorite teas, this isn't necessarily the brand I like the most, but my favorite teas are chamomile and lavender. Um, I know it can kind of knock you out, I guess. It doesn't really knock me out. It just sort of like chills me out. It just, it's cozy and I just love the flavor and it's so good. So I love having some chamomile and lavender tea. And then I also love to have a nice comfy blanket. I like to lay down on my bed while I read. And this blanket is probably my favorite. It is my My Little Pony fleece blanket and I made it myself. Don't just, anyways, don't judge me. <laughs> It's just this, I made it just oversized, so it's giant. It is a massive blanket, and it's so soft and comfy and warm, and I just, it's my favorite blanket to just snuggle in because it's giant. <laughs> and then the last thing I always love to do that really, really gives a cozy vibe is I love to have an ASMR room on. And I will put a link down below of my favorite one I love watching. Um, it's this one that's supposed to be the inside of Hagrid's hut, and there's like a crackling fire, and then during one point in the video, there's a thunderstorm outside, and I just, I love it. It just gives the perfect atmosphere no matter what time of day it is. And we don't have a fireplace in our house, which is probably the one thing about, I wish we had in our house. We don't have, I would love to have a fireplace. So I love having that crackling fireplace sound. It gives the perfect like fall vibes. So yeah, all right. That's the finally fall book tag. Um, I'm not gonna tag anyone specific because this tag has been around for quite a while. And I'm just gonna say I tag everybody. If you wanna do this tag, please do it. And let me know if you do it. I would love to be able to see it. But yeah, if you would like to do it, just go for it, I tag you. So 
do it. All right, on the side of the screen over here is my logo. If you click on that, you can subscribe to my channel and follow me on my book journey. On the side of the screen over here is another video if you wanna watch another one right now. But thank you so much for watching. Happy fall, you rock, and don't forget to keep reading. Bye.